an interview with the education officer of Bora Bora Prison Hospital. What I'm looking for is um, the attitudes uh, of you know prisoners or inmates to education in prisons, uh, attitudes of staff, motivation factors, you know value of education in re rehabilitation or ther you know therapy or, um, yeah. and the different types of facility facilities available as well. Mm. in the establishment, you know, which are obviously a lot in your case, aren't they? Yeah, well, the IQs of us go from, they can lie way down, from about 80 up to, you know, 140 over the scale. So you've got a wide spectrum, yes. covering all the abilities and nothing in there. Um, all age groups as well, I suppose. Yeah, all age groups. Mm. You know, when we had a little girl of 15, so when we had to start the education laid down, a separate program laid out, and they bringing the teachers from outside to take this, this particular girl. Um, you know, she was in the end of the Reading Crown Court, yeah, I think she should easily be quite easily included for in um, a security unit or a conventional mental mm. hospital and brought down in a um, mm. uh, community home or a preschool. Rather than Broadmoor. Broadmoor. Mm. It didn't happen in school. Can mm. mm. you uh, get people in Broadmoor? Yeah, but this was a different character even than the, um, than the only one that we had. Because I had to bring in teachers from outside, uh, in addition to the normal further education, the adult education range. So we we'll carry on this girl's schooling for 64 um, GCE. Yes. Yes. So we've got a lot of teachers for French, English, uh, maths. Mm. And I fitted it into our own program mm. for history. Because um, you do have full time teachers there. Is yeah, that I'm right? Full time. You're the only full time. Yeah, right? full time. But you have classes in the day? I have run in the yeah. uh, about 42 classes. 42? Mm. And what, how many people to a class usually? They're quite small, are they? Mm, of 12. Mm. Which is the, it's well, again, is the ideal, isn't it? Yeah. Really? But don't forget, if you get the people that suffer with all forms of mental illness, and uh, um, some of mm. us some <coughs> suffer with uh, paranoia, some are psychotic, you know, some are psychopaths. Mm. Um, you know, there's some of the, you know, uh, yeah. psychopaths with uh, schizoid, schizoid yeah. tendencies. Yeah. So you have this whole um, spectrum of people. Spectrum of people come in. Very much as you have outside. This is just a standard oh, yes. society. Yeah. But being in a temporary institution, do you think education is of benefit to these people? I mean, well, I think, uh, well it depends. I mean, if they're schizophrenic well, I mean, and they're. Uh, but, you know, we are bringing in now a lot of vocational training. Mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, the high developer workshops in Broadmoor, and we're dealing with city and girls. Um, and we are really into the hospital as far as getting taken off from the room to outside work. Mm. Um, and we went in office training and we went in um, uh, business studies and office routine. I've got one going in City and Girls which does the TV and radio servicing full time, uh, the full certificate. We're developing welding, we will do, be doing, we have done um, tailoring. Um, and obviously we do carbon we engineering. Mm. Um, so you do a whole... do a whole range yes. of yes. vocational education. In addition yes. to that, we're catered with open university. Uh, How I many have, people? I have uh, one, two, three, four, five people in open university. Two are on the third year, one is two on the, two on the third year, two on the second year, one just starting. Mm. And do you find they're consistent, or do they have yeah. that, that they keep with it? Um... How many people at Broadmoor are there? Roughly? 850. 850 and... Oh, about 180 women. 180 women. And um, what sort of percentage roughly are interested in education, I suppose? Of the women. To, yeah, of the women then. Yeah. Well, uh, I must have, like, about... I've been in the population with this from 15 up to 80. Uh, I have about 20 or 50 people coming to me at some time during the week for mm -hmm. some form of education which goes from basic English to illiterate, mm. semi-illiterate, GCEO levels, mm. um, English for all mm. Asians, which is uh, Pakistanis, mm. Bangladesh, mm. and Indians, taken by women who speak mm. Sudu, Gujarati, and... Uh, so you, and, yeah. 
Um, that's a separate class on their own, dealing with uh, two uh, individual teachers, teaching West Indian illiterates with no idea of syntax. Yeah. Mm. Um, then I would want to, um, class I've got now one that has one Italian, one... So you cover a, a wider uh, range of subjects than most schools, really? Yeah. Mm. And uh, I do, I do mm. typing. Uh, history. I, mm. uh, I do workshop mathematics, GC, uh, maths, uh, elementary mathematics, basic mathematics. I know the 12 years that I've been involved, I've seen the standards drop and the age drop considerably coming in. I would have found it awful. The difficult. standards have dropped? I would have found it extremely difficult 12 years ago to run uh, three classes in basic subjects. No, no mm. problem. As a matter of fact, it's virtually taken uh, last percentage of my time. Mm. Um, what about library facilities? You've got everything like that, I suppose. Library. I have an education library. You can get the library to come in. Visiting library. Oh, I, I yeah. yes, there's a box library which mm. comes in. I, I asked um, if one came here, but apparently they don't have, no. they haven't got a very big library at all. And most prisons have exceptionally good libraries. Mm. I've been in prisons for 20 years. I was teaching. Yeah. It's not open to the public, though. The, oh, well, they wouldn't be, would they? Yeah. The prison library, no. Yeah. Yeah. Most prison libraries are very good. Yes. I taught in the grammar school, I taught in Tittman College. Mm. Um, I didn't really enjoy the thing I came to prison school, it was more my life. Mm. I the, make a living out of crime, you see. And the money uh, comes from where? He sounds like Richard income. Burton. No, my money comes from. I'm paid by the Minister of Health. Oh, that's right. And you're the local educational authority, aren't you? Yeah. Um, it has advantages of being paid on... It has advantages of being paid on being by the record by the ministry. Oh, I see. Or the of the home office. I wonder why it varies, then. Uh, because it's a mental hospital. No, because I, I was a monitor in the system. Oh, I see. I was the first education officer ever in Pentonville. Really? Yeah. Pentonville? Oh, no, that's the book I've got to read. I um, was in the day. Not, not a girl called... Um, not one by a girl woman called no. Bonnie Morris. Yeah, not read that one? I no. Think so. oh. I, I thought it'd be a grounding. Oh. Oh, so that's the one they've got at the university in the library up there. Oh, yeah, you want to get hold of Francis Banks to teach them. Oh, I've got that one. Yeah, that's very good. That's um, based mainly on education in prison, isn't it? It's very good. You want to have. Well, that's ideas. in the 1958, yeah. isn't it? No, earlier than that, isn't it? Well, 54. Yeah. You want to go and see, um, we're in this area, yeah. there's a man called Berkey. W. Berkey, who lives B O R K E Y, mm -hmm. who lives in Wokingham, and who's an industrial training officer, responsible for patient mm -hmm. vocation training for other prisons. Mm -hmm. He's well worth going to see. Berkey, B U R K E Y. If you say, mention my name and say you were speaking to a man called Yian Williams. Williams, yeah. yeah I E U A N. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. you say you went to Yian Williams and ask him. Well, then he can give you any information about the Will I get his name? Where will I... Where his... If I had some directory, W. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think, um... I, actually, this visit's been really helpful because, um... You know, he's shown me all around and yeah. uh, answered a lot of the questions as well, which is probably quite applicable in many ways to Broadmoor, though, you know, the... The, um... People are different, I don't know. Um... But do, do you yes. think a visit would be of value to come? I will come down and see it, yes. Yes. Mm. Well. As I said, there are many more classes, much more... Um, yeah. Do you do group counselling and things like that? No, we've really done with my psychologist and group therapist. The interview is recorded concerned a visit to Reading, Reading Prison. The first interview was with the education officer of the prison. He also conducted a tour of the establishment and introduced me to members of the teaching staff and some of the prison inmates. The second interview was with the education officer of Broadmoor Prison Hospital at Crowthorne. This interview also took place in Reading. Right then, um, that interview with the chief Broadmoor education officer, who also does work at Reading Prison, will continue in a minute on another tape. Now he that gentleman really reminds me, listening back now, of uh, Richard Burton, you know, because he's, he's Welsh as well, 
He really sounds like Richard Burton. It's amazing, actually. If he did the Ballad of Reading Gel, if he recited that, he would sound just like Richard Burton. Um, you can actually hear activity in the background um, of the uh, prison when I'm talking to him. You can hear movement of chairs and tables and things, you know, activity, doors opening. Okay, the he's, uh, battery must be getting low. It turned itself off for some reason then. This is Sheila still, just a little bit of the end of the tape there. Um, that wasn't the full interview with the Chief Education Officer. That will be happening uh, on the following tape where I interview him. I just put, kept a bit of that on there. So, yeah, I was, you know, much younger when I um, did the interview, going into Reading Jail, being shown all around. Um, I had to get home office permission. Didn't get through the first time, but a couple of months later they decided to let me in. It was up to the prison whether they felt they could fit me in or not, because apparently, you know, staff shortages and all that. So I think it was a very good in introduction in to get into Reading Jail like that to discover later in my life when I was doing Family Tree that I had the governor of Reading Jail at the time of Oscar Wilde described by Oscar Wilde as the, pale fa the yellow pale face of doom is how Oscar Wilde described um, Henry Bevan Isaacson who's my, one of my he's a distant cousin a fourth cousin so many times removed connected to my Isaacson tree he was a uh, high up in the army before. He was a um, lieutenant colonel um, in the army. Fought all over the place. India, you know. He did marry. He never had any children. He'd served in Manchester, Her, Her Majesty's Prison in Manchester and Lewis Prison in Sussex. Um, I think he died around 2010 or 2015. Yeah, he was the, he was the governor when Oscar Wilde created his famous ballad, The Ballad of Reading Jail. So this is Sheila in her studio on a very, very windy day in Alberta. Because this is because she's got the cassette player. <laughs> I am going to buy one when I get round to it. I, oh, I can't find the one I was using. Uh, and I'd actually shared the whole of that tape in the past on my tree so it has been saved for posterity but not obviously with me in Alberta the actual uh, neat tapes were actually shared into sections parts I think there was seven parts uh, all together um, I, I still hope to be able to find those original tapes I've got the original cassette which is 43 years old um, and it still works. Um, it still works for now. I don't know what I've put. I think I put it in my pocket, haven't I? What have I done with it? Anyway, it's a blurry day at Western Supermare. There's the beach. I don't live far from the beach. There's the seafront. Over and out.